Hello, my name is Stephen Pro, and today we're going to be demonstrating a variety of coral propagation techniques uh, with various specimens of coral. This is a bird's nest, a pink bird's nest coral, very typical of your SPS corals. A nice coloration, nice growth pattern, actually very dense, not very spindly. Um, excellent uh, choice for propagation. You want to propagate it with a, a tool such as this. These are called bone cutters. They're stainless steel. They hold up a little bit better than other tools you'll get. But you can also use uh, diagonal wire cutters, um, tin snips, anything with a, a sharp edge that has a plier-like action. Uh, needle nose pliers will work as well. And then you just go in, find a branch you want to remove. Grab it firmly and twist off. You can also reach in the top, take some pieces out. With these, you want to glue them down to a base. Um, this is a piece of concrete base. You can use ceramic tiles, anything that'll hold them down. And I generally use a super glue gel. You want to use a gel versus the regular runny super glue because it gets a little bit too messy. I always pre-place it to see where it's going to touch and land, and then I apply the glue to those areas. Give it a couple seconds to dry, and then you just place it in the water. The minute the water hits the super glue, it sort of skins over and helps it cure up. You can use that same technique for any branching, uh, Acropora or Acropora, uh, Montipora, Montipora. Uh, any of the branching SPS corals. You can also do soft coral propagation. Um, any of your leather corals is a great candidate. Uh, the sarcophytons, the simularias, uh, those are all very good candidates for propagation. Sharp pair of surgical scissors, kitchen scissors, um, scalpel, exacto knife, razor blade, anything with a sharp edge to it is, is, a, is a good tool. Again, just look for easy pieces to take off. You want to not use anything serrated. You don't want to be sawing at it. You want to be nice, clean, uh, smooth strokes as you cut. Like this. It's okay to go over it multiple times. You just open it up. These, you want to adhere them down again to plugs. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can use rubber bands. You can use these plastic zip ties. Uh, 
Just put it around the piece. Like so. Snug it up a little bit. Once it adheres in a month or so, you can cut the zip tie and remove it completely. You can also use rubber bands. Uh, they will tend to degrade a little bit quicker. The zip ties will never go away, but uh, the rubber bands will uh, tend to fall apart in salt water after a while, but hopefully by the time they fall apart, your coral is safely adhered to your plug. The other technique that I like a lot, but I do not have here, is to stitch a piece with uh, a needle and fishing line. So I would just take a needle threaded with fishing line, poke it through the coral, straight away, or all the way through it, and then tie it uh, to the fragment or to the to the plug. Uh, you want to you don't want to cinch it down too tight because you can't pull the thread right through the tissue, but you want to tie it down tight enough to to keep it from bouncing around too much. Uh, this is a fox coral, I believe. It's, it's receded, so, you know, pulled inside the skeleton, so I can't see it real well, but it's probably a fox coral, Nemenzophilia. Uh, this is a good candidate for using on a tile saw. Uh, when you do use the tile saw, I would recommend that you put salt water from, you know, the, the environment that this coral came from uh, as the lubricant instead of tap water. You also don't want to put a ton of water inside there, just enough to wet, keep the blade at the end, at the cutting end wet. Um, you can use this same saw for, for many of these wall type LPS, uh, you know, all your euphelias, all the, uh, the hammers, the branches, the frog spawns, the torches, uh, the elegance corals. Those are all good candidates for this same uh, demonstration. After you're done uh, running the coral through the tile saw, it's a good idea to give it a quick rinse. This tile saw is more abrasive than cutting, so by its nature it creates a lot of dust, uh, coral residue and dust. You can see some of it here, you know, some of that, some of the tissue and a lot of the skeleton dust. And uh, you want to get that off of your piece uh, before putting it back in the aquarium so it doesn't foul the, your aquarium and doesn't foul the, the, the tissue of the coral. But you can see you know, how uh, clean cut it is, and you can also make out the, the honeycomb-like structure inside there. The tile saw is also very good for massive growth form corals like this uh, closed brain. Uh, you know, this could be a Favia phyllites, uh, I'm not sure. But uh, the tile saw is a good choice for these as well. Uh, these corals are much denser. You can actually see from this broken edge how dense it is compared to that fox coral that you can see the honeycomb structure to it. Because it is much denser, you're going to have to go much slower on the saw. With the fox crawl, he's able to pass it through pretty quickly like a hot knife through butter. Uh, this is going to go much slower through the saw. <laughs> You can see a much denser coral skeleton inside created much more of like almost like a cement like residue.
get rid of all that uh, goo. And again, though, you can see how nicely and clean cut this is. And also, again, how dense it is inside there.